Let's explore the question now. Why are traffic lights red and green? Back in 1865, a railway manager and engineer named John Perk Knight proposed the idea of using green and red lamps as traffic lights. It was installed outside the House of Parliament in London. The system worked well for about a month. That's when one of the gas lines that was supplied to the lights began to leak. Unfortunately, the policeman who was operating the lamp was unaware of the leak and ended up being severely burned when the lamp exploded. Thus, despite its early success, the sofa mode traffic system was immediately dropped in England. Obviously, we have come a long way in traffic light technology, but we are stuck with the same old color scheme. What is it about red and green that gave them such lasting power? Red, the color of blood and fire, has been a danger signal since long. So it makes a good sign for a warning signal. Rayleigh scattering is the scattering of light by particles which are much smaller than the wavelength of the light incident, such as the air molecules or fog or mist. It is inversely proportional to fourth power of the wavelength of light, which means that shorter wavelengths such as violet and blue are scattered stronger than the longer wavelengths such as red. So here are photons, red and blue, and they travel along the path of a wave. Now we've added in some atmosphere, just some random molecules. Now watch what happens as these particles move. You'll notice immediately that the blue photon is moving around a lot more in the same amount of space, and thus is scattered more. Every time one of those atmospheric particle glows, that's supposed to represent scattering. In real life, Blue light is actually scattered by a factor of six times more than that of red. If you do the calculations, it shows that violet scatters almost 10 times more than red. Hence, red reaches our eye over longer distances and even in the presence of mist and fog. When the first primitive railroad signaling devices were developed in the 1830s and 1840s, red meant stop green meant caution and clear, that is white, meant go. This system had several defects. One obvious problem was the fact that white signal could be easily confused with ordinary white light. What was worse, however, was the fact that this system wasn't fail-safe. This was tragically demonstrated sometime around 1914. The red lens supposedly fell out of a signal, so it erroneously showed a white indication. This caused a train to sail through the stop signal, resulting in a disastrous crash. The railroad subsequently decided to drop white and make green for go and yellow for caution. Yellow presumably was chosen because it was readily visible and offered the most striking contrast between the other two colors. When the first electric signals were installed in Cleveland, Ohio in 1914, they used red and green indications. When the first modern automatic traffic signals were put up in Detroit in the early 1920s, they used red, yellow and green and that's the convention we are stuck with today. Mm -hmm.